Shalom, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoun. You are watching Israeli News Live. Of course, the stories that are headlining today, ISIS target believed to be Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is killed in Syria. He's actually killed in the Idlib province uh, from what my own source had reported to me before this broke this morning. Uh, it was stating to me that yes, uh, he was killed. Not that he was killed, but he committed suicide. And from what I've been told, uh, he committed suicide with his three children. Uh, they were all killed as well in a tunnel when he was trying to escape when U.S. Special Forces had closed in on him. Uh, this was Saturday night when this took place. And I was told that al-Baghdadi had came back to Syria to try to rescue his family and get them out of Syria. As we had reported to you guys back a few months ago, even, uh, I guess, maybe almost a month before al-Baghdadi was going to make a public statement uh, of a reinsurgent of the ISIS militants working in Libya. Uh, we had reported that information from our intel sources, and then, of course, that actually happens. Now, you may wonder, gosh, Steve, you know, what kind of intel sources do you have where they know that he's going to make these statements even weeks ahead of, the, uh, ahead of time? Um, I can't say for sure. I don't know the intricate details of that, uh, but you got to think and keep in mind besides sources that we have in the Middle East there are they in, uh, intercepting intel that is going out maybe they heard a transmission of uh, that Baghdadi was going to make that public statement uh, or if it's through uh, CIA connections which not my CIA connections in this case here my CIA connections deal more with uh, what's happening in the homeland right now but um, it could have also be that because of the support of the United States and Israel and uh, Qatar, Saudi Arabia have given ISIS and even Turkey uh, in the Middle East there that um, uh, because of that, that's how they were able to know that he was going to do it and they just released that information to me. Again, I don't know for sure. Now this, uh, this uh, death of al-Baghdadi certainly is going to be a major win for President Trump. It's going to put him in the limelight. It'll make it look like that, uh, um, uh, that we are fighting ISIS. And in our report today, I really need to share with you some of the information going back in history here to remind you that the, the evidence out there is that we only take out ISIS militants when it is... Uh, how would you put that? When it is convenient for the political scene. And I think as well, this uh, killing of Baghdadi is to deflect the impeachment hearings. Uh, I believe that there are higher authorities out there, whether it be in Israel or, or wherever it may be, that when they're trying to bring about this new world order, making Jerusalem the headquarters of the new world order, that it is easier for them to take out one man one commander in order to keep the main commander, which would be President Trump, in the position to stay president of the United States, not just because of the impeachment, but also uh, in relation to uh, uh, this next election. Now, you might think, that sounds kind of stupid. They would do something like that. They do. I don't say that just by hearsay. And, and in the report I'm working on right now, there's going to be a landslide of information uh, targeting uh, many, many people, including Russian leaders as well, uh, in, involved in organized crime, money laundering to support these war efforts in the Middle East. Uh, I can tell you from my own experience, back when I was working with the CIA, uh, there came a time where uh, one of the guys that I worked with who was an assassin had, had killed so many people to silence individuals because of fear that that information would be leaked to the public. And if it was leaked to the public, if it became public knowledge, it would undermine the wars we were doing back then, which in that case was Nicaragua. Uh, it, would, it, would, it would actually reveal the Iran connection that we were buying weapons from Iran uh, and selling them to the Contras. And of course, that the US government was involved in drug trafficking to do exactly that. Because they wanted to fake the death of one of their lead assassins who had been working with the CIA all the way since uh, Fidel Castro. And I am, perfect, I am a witness to the photos of Castro and him together 
back in those days, there was also, uh, there was another agent. He was an older agent. Worked with the same uh, man that I knew. Worked with him for years. But he began to make a big fuss over this. And of course, I was brought into this because he wanted an ear to talk to about it. Some mistakes were made. And he began to really make a big to-do over it. As a result, he ended up coming to a very untimely death. I'd met with him on one Saturday evening. By the following week, he was dead. I got a phone call. I got a phone call, and I was told then, and I'll just use a first name here so you understand what I'm talking about, and it is a true first name. Henry's dead. I asked, how did Henry die? He was shot in the back of the head with a 22 from a vehicle following him while his son was driving. And then I was told, you understand what I'm trying to tell you, correct, Stephen? I said, yes, I do. And the phone went silent. When there's a major operation going that has ramifications such as what we are seeing right now in the Middle East, the death of al-Baghdadi is something either they could fake or it's worth doing for the sake of the greater operation that they're working on. With that stated, let me remind you of some other stories as well. If you remember back in 2017, Russia, here's al-Baghdadi pictured here, Russia was believed to have killed al-Baghdadi in, in several airstrikes where they were targeting militant facilities there. He was injured in that. My own source from the Middle East confirmed that he was injured and he had to recuperate. But if you also remember, I, I, and I, maybe I mentioned this already at the beginning of the broadcast, is that we knew in advance when al-Baghdadi was in Libya that he was about to make public statements before it ever took place. We were very accurate on that. There's some people, they, they'll note in the comments, oh, Steve, you know, you're, you're reporting lies. You go back and you show me where the lies have been. We've been accurate in all of our reporting, including with the Iranian tankers. In fact, my own Pentagon source had to admit to me that I was accurate when I said that the Iranian tankers that were first attacked, not the one down in the Red Sea, but the other two that were attacked, were actually carried out by Al-Qaeda militants using Iranian uh, boats that looked just like the Iranian Guard boats that they had carried out those attacks. But of course, that's when he also wanted me to leak the information that Iran had become a major threat for the United States. And that was because Iran was working with China and they had a technology that the U.S. could not mitigate. We shared that information with you. So our sources come from every direction you can imagine. And we really appreciate the information we get. We value our sources uh, in sharing those things with us. So this is not the first time that al-Baghdadi took a hit. And again, they say he's dead, but you can always fake that death too. Maybe he did die. And that's just Stephen speaking there. None of my sources have confirmed that he's alive. Or, the, or, he, or he even suggested that he could have been, uh, uh, this could have been a staged uh, death. But that's what we're hearing, right? Now, to remind you, look at South Front. Uh, in this article right here, Israel's top commander finally spills secrets of invisible war in Syria. Now, we're going back all the way to January the 15th of 2019, okay? And uh, in this article here, this is where for the first time, we, we covered this with Gadi uh, Isenkot, the army, Israeli army commander that uh, spoke about Israel going beyond just that of, as it had been the propaganda had been given us, only humanitarian help. It says for years Israel denied allegations that it had a role uh, in funding any weaponizing uh, the anti-Assad insurgency in Syria. And more often military officials responded, no comment. Even when confronted with overwhelming evidence of Israeli weapons documented Al-Qaeda linked insurgents hands. But this all changed in a new British Sunday Times interview with outgoing Israeli army commander Gadi uh, Eisenkot 
who has finally confirmed the Israeli Defense Forces supplied the weapons to rebels across the border for self-defense. And further, perhaps more stunningly, has admitted to long waging an invisible war in Syria that involved thousands of attacks. This here is Gadi right here, former uh, Israeli general. The interview uh, constitutes the first time that any current top Israeli military or government official has fully acknowledged sending anything beyond humanitarian supplies, such as medical aid to Syrian militants seeking to topple uh, the Assad government. And yet it still appears the country's military chief is slow playing the confirmation only acknowledging, excuse me, confirmation only acknowledging that the IDF provided light weapons. Even after years of reporting, has definitely uncovered an expansive Israeli program to arm dozens of insurgent groups and pay their salaries, including known affiliates of Al-Qaeda in Syria. Which, by the way, Al-Qaeda and ISIS, they run hand in hand. All right. This comes after the Syrian government has for years accused Israel of partnering with the West and Gulf countries, such as the US, UK, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Turkey, of funding and weaponizing Al-Qaeda slash ISIS insurgency as part of a covert regime change operations aimed at Damascus. And its allies, Iran, Hezbollah, since then, countries like Qatar have come forward to reveal just how vast their covert role in fueling the Syrian war really is. Now, I want to share that with you. This was on Zero Hedge. Uh, where they put this article out here, the top Qatari official, this is back in, uh, what was it, 2017? Yeah, October 24th, 2017. Top Qatari official, blow this up so you guys can see this better. The top Qatar official is no less than former Prime Minister Hamad bin uh, Yassim bin Yaber al Thani who oversaw Syria operations on behalf of Qatar until 2013, also a foreign minister, and is seen below with then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in this January 2010 photo. As a reminder, Qatar's 2022 World Cup committee donated $500,000 to the Clinton Foundation in 2014. And there he is, pictured with Hillary Clinton, right? It says, in an interview with Qatar TV Wednesday, Bin Jabbar al Thani revealed that his country, alongside with Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and the United States, began shipping weapons to jihadists from the very moment events first started in 2011. Al Thani even likened the covert operation to hunting prey, the prey being President Assad and his supporters, prey which he admits go, got away. All right? Now, let me share with you here. This is uh, an interview that was published about these things. When the events first started in Syria, I went to Saudi Arabia. And I met with King Abdullah. I did that on the instructions of His Highness the Prince, my father. He, Abdullah, said, we are behind you. You go ahead with this plan. And we will coordinate, but you should be in charge. I won't get into details, but we took full charge. And anything that was sent to Syria would go to Turkey and was coordinated with U.S. forces. And us, everyone else, was involved, the military people. There may have been mistakes and support was given to the wrong side, but not Daesh. See? Now, he admits that they may have given the support to the wrong side, but not Daesh. So they're trying to separate that, right? Maybe there was a relationship with Nusra. It's possible, but I myself don't know about this. But I can tell you that even that was the case when it was decided that Nusra is not acceptable. The support for Nusra stopped and the concentration was on the liberation of Syria. Syria didn't need liberating. Liberating from what? You know, that's what gets me. I'll, I'll post the links to this in the, in the below for you so you can look at this yourself. And also, another thing here, this was on globalsearch.ca uh, and from Canada. America created Al-Qaeda and the ISIS terror group. 
And I won't go into too much on this article here. I brought this out before in another uh, uh, news clip with you guys, but it says, much like Al-Qaeda, the Islamic State ISIS is made in the USA an instrument of terror designed to divide and conquer the oil-rich Middle East to conquer Iran's growing influence in the region. The fact that the United States is long and toward history of backing terrorist groups will surprise only those who watch the news and ignore history. All right? During the 1970s, the CIA used the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt as a barrier both to thwart Soviet expansion and prevent the spread of Marxist ideology among the Arab masses. The United States also openly supported uh, Sarkat Islam against uh, Sukarno in Indonesia and supported the Jamaat el uh, Islami terror group against Zelafarkar al Bahuto in Pakistan. Last but certainly not least, there is Al-Qaeda. Lest we forget, the CIA gave birth to Osama bin Laden and breastfed his organization during the 1980s. Former British Foreign Secretary Robin Cook told the House Commons that Al-Qaeda was unquestionably a product of Western intelligence. <laughs> You know, the Islamic State is the latest weapon that, much like Al-Qaeda, is certainly backfiring. ISIS recently rose to international prominence after its thugs began beheading American journalists. And not to mention, you remember how ISIS apparently just ends up with all of our weapons that Obama left behind over there in Syria? And how did they get the ability to be able to fire this equipment up? Ask some of the military personnel that operate these vehicles the type of safety devices that are in there to try to prevent some of this. But nonetheless, Obama felt that we just couldn't afford to bring all this military equipment back, so instead it fell into the hands of ISIS, right? Well, let me remind you what John Kerry had to say in this leaked audio that uh, was published on many, many platforms. We actually published it, I think, even before mainstream media did. Uh, uh, this is a 45-second clip where he says uh, John Kerry is admitting that they just sat back and let ISIS do it. Now, he doesn't admit the creation of ISIS, but watch what he does say, and I think that will speak for itself. ...sent in the White House over the handling of the crisis in Syria. In an audio recording obtained by CNN, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry told a group at the United Nations that he wanted a more forceful intervention against the Assad regime. Four people in the administration who have all argued for your support. Now I must go. I've argued for your support. I stood up, I'm the guy who stood up and announced we're going to attack Assad because of the weapons. Kerry also criticized Congress. Well, they didn't actually play the clip in there, but uh, actually in that same clip that they're talking about there, uh, John Kerry is actually, you can go on to listen to the audio transcript. You can look it up online. It's on YouTube and different places out there. He admits that as ISIS was doing such a great job in overthrowing the Assad government and destroying his army, they sat back and watched and waited for ISIS to finish the job. Of course, he was meeting with, with uh, members of the Free Syrian Army at the time, and uh, they were wondering why wasn't the U.S. doing more to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad, and that was, of course, his answer to that. I thought that clip actually had that in there, but it did not.